Live from Vancouver, Canada, it's theCUBE at OpenStack Summit Vancouver 2015. Brought to you by headline sponsors EMC and jointly by Red Hat and Cisco. With additional sponsorship by Brocade and HP. Welcome back to SiliconANGLE TV's live continuous coverage, wall to wall from the OpenStack Foundation here in beautiful Vancouver. I'm Stu Miniman with Wikibon.com. Excited to have with me uh, two members of the OpenStack Foundation. Mark Collier, just off the keynote stage uh, this morning on day two, the Chief Oper Operating Officer. Welcome back to the program. Thank you, thank you, it's exciting. All right, and Lauren Sell is the VP of Marketing, helping uh, the community along yeah. and everything. Uh, welcome to theCUBE. Great, thanks, glad y'all are here. All right, so first of all, Thank you. Uh, you know, we've, the foundation's helped us out a lot. This is our third year with the broadcast. I think it's our fifth or sixth OpenStack event that we've done. Yeah. So we love that we get to document the history of what's going on here, talk about the growth, and you know, Mark, you know, we're, we're, we were debating on the intro this morning, you know, how are we on that maturity spectrum? So yeah, I think you did sure. a good job of kind of laying out where we are. Um, my take on it was, I think the pieces are in place and we're kind of close there and you know, you know, I put my analyst hat on, I sure. say, you know, I don't see any barriers to maturity. And, you know, is that fair? Do you think we're kind of there? Yeah, if, I mean, if I gave a baseball analogy, what inning are we in for the maturity, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I mean, I think for, you know, we've talked a lot about the compute storage and networking, those fundamental building blocks. That's the piece that we needed to solidify first. Yeah. And there's all these things you can do on top of it. And so, we're starting to kind of think about the world of OpenStack and different projects and kind of, you know, rings almost, like there's that, that core, uh, of those compute services, those are the things that are maturing the fastest. And I think it's interesting if you look at like Walmart and some of these big users, you know, they're running in production, obviously like massive scale, but what's interesting is, you know, they're actually running usually things like Ice House or sometimes Juno. So in a way, you know, they're already, you know, achieving a, a certain level of stability on, you know, two releases ago. So as they move forward with Juno and, and uh, you know, and all the way on to Liberty, you know, and Kilo, you know, that actually will show what that, platform stability can do in real life, you know, as people go through those upgrades. Yeah, that, that's a great point, actually, something I haven't dug too, too much in. You know, where are users on what version that they're kind of using? Uh, you know, if you use kind of the phone analogy, uh, you know, we know iPhone <laughs> users, I think it was like 85% of them are on kind of current or N-1. Sure. Android users, it's like less than 10%, yeah. so. We actually uh, just had our user survey come yeah. out um, the end of last week, and I think it was 76% of users are Ice House or later right now, so people are staying pretty current. I mean, I think it was eBay this morning was talking about they're running Havana right now for their large scale, but generally people are, are fairly recent. Huh. Yeah, another another stat from that user survey that speaks to the maturity pieces. You know, we do this survey periodically, and if you look over the last year, a year ago, a third of the people who filled out the survey indicated that their cloud was a production cloud, and now it's at 50%. So, you know, obviously they're people that are still in that proof of concept stage, but we're seeing more and more people that are telling us, okay, Moving we're running right production. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I tell you, I, I love the survey data. We actually, we have it in our crowd chat. We've been talking about some of the numbers there. We had Red Hat talking about how Seth's doing and the like. Um, for, for, for me, Lauren, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about just participation, because you know, once again, record breaking on how many people are here. Um, when I do my quick math as to, okay, HP brought 100 or whatever people, Red Hat, everything else, there's still a lot of non kind of big vendor uh, people here and, and growing. Is there's there's the people that kind of go every six months to all the shows, <laughs> and then there's you know the users and everybody else that are coming in. Sure. Yeah. Well, we look at it from a couple of different directions. So just in terms of like the global community, I mean, one thing that we do and we you know make a huge investment in is moving the summit around. So every six months. Um, we're moving around. We do one in North America in the first part of the year, and then we do one in either Europe or Asia the second part of the year. And the attendance makeup really changes. So I, in Europe, I think we had, you know, 47% of attendees were from Europe, and about 45 or so from the U.S. And then here we have, you know, back to 85% from from North America. So moving it around is really important, and bringing new people in. I think. Yesterday they did a show of hands and how many people were first time attendees here in Vancouver was pretty amazing. Um, and then what you're talking about just as far as the makeup, I mean, when we started this, I think the first design summit back in Austin in 2010, you know, there's 75 people in a room. It's all people are working for companies who have software developers that want to just start building this out. And now when you see all the users that are here talking, users that are organizing sessions and working groups, I mean, it's a really, it's a really great mix. And I think that, um, I think that a lot of our sponsors have been happy too with how many users they've been able to reach here, so. 
All right, maybe to close out that thread, want to talk about, uh, you know, Tokyo's the next one, uh, then you're going to be back in Austin yes, and uh, yeah. Barcelona, exactly. uh, which I, I hear is becoming the Las Vegas of Europe. Uh, so, uh, um, well, I thought it was Amsterdam, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and by the way, can we come back to Vancouver? Because I love this place. Yeah. Oh, man. I we're know. actually talking so about it. It's it. been amazing. I mean, we, uh, we're giving away rain jackets this week, so we thought for sure it was going to be raining all week, and the weather's been incredible, so... All right, so, so Mark, I, if I can go back to the keynote, one of the things I, I, I love the the demo that you had with Google and Rackspace. Uh, my understanding is they put that together in about a week. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we we always kind of, uh, I don't know, I'm guilty of this myself of sort of coming up with ideas at the last minute, and we started talking to some folks at Google and said, well, you know, when we talked to you before about Kubernetes and why you're excited about it and why you think OpenStack is an interesting platform for for clouds out there. Uh, you know, they said, well, where we see this going is you can run the same app with the same code on an OpenStack cloud, and you can also run it on a Google cloud. So I called them up and said, hey, that thing that you wanted to do one day, can we do it next week? <laughs> <laughs> is that possible? Is this even like possible? And they said, yeah, let's let's look at it. And so, so Adrian and Sandip started working on it just like towards the end of last week. So it's kind of crazy. They they pulled it off. Yeah, I, you know, it, if I look at things, if if you said, where's the sandbox and I can play with stuff, you know, everybody talks about Amazon. It's, that's where I can do test dev. They've got so many different tools and pieces mm -hmm. that I can build and they go up the stack pretty well. Um, I, I feel as your description of uh, OpenStack as an integration engine, it, it, it's starting to get there where I can, I can I can try stuff, you know, I can fail, it doesn't have, you know, huge investment, didn't take me a year and millions of dollars to do it. Sure. Um, you know, wh wh where, do you, where do you see that, that piece of OpenStack today? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that what we're learning as we talk to users and get the data from user survey and stuff, is that there's certain common aspects of every OpenStack cloud, but there's all kinds of other variations depending on the workload that they want to run, depending on all their other business needs and requirements. In some cases, they may want to run you know, some of their production stuff on OpenStack, and you know, we heard from Tapjoy at the last summit, where you know, they, they still run some stuff on Amazon, and they have a, a high-speed connection to Equinix, I believe, right nearby, where they run you know, a lot of their stuff on OpenStack. So, you know, people want choices, There's a, it's a complex world out there, there's no one solution for everybody, and so the integration engine concept is just really, it reflects kind of our core culture of, you put users first, they want to try different things, always embrace choice, and you know, don't try to get into the religious wars of you know this project versus that project or this technology or that company. Just try to you know integrate with everything, and it'll all work out. Is kind of our philosophy. Yeah. So um, I, I was actually uh, t talking to uh, um, Sean, Sean Kerner, I believe it was, uh, and we said, you know, what, what's the big thing that we've seen so far? And he said, you know what? There's no drama this week. <laughs> you know, th there there wasn't a big thing. It's not you know a war. Uh, I had I don't know if you check your Twitter feed yet, but uh, when you were on stage, we were saying, you know, well, where's the you know it's the AWS killer or get people off VMware licensing? And it's like, no, no, no. We're you know we're not there. We're talking about you know you cases, we're talking about what customers are doing. Um, you know, no offense, but sometimes it's like some of the boring pieces of doing our job in the IT industry, and that is a sure sign of me, to me, at that you know, we're reaching maturity. Um, yeah, I think so, I yeah. think so. I mean, yeah, we've, there's always drama that comes and goes in every, every community or in every technology movement, but uh, I think that you know, we're really reaching that point where you, you hear like you know, eBay was talking about running 300,000 cores, and you know, I think they, the users who are really the customers, right, of the ecosystem, they can really cut through the drama and say, okay, everybody get along, kids. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna work with a bunch of different partners and it's all gonna be open stack, it's all gonna be you know, open and you know, they, and people fall in line when, when they hear from a user that big. Yeah, so, so we talked to Jonathan a little bit about DefCore. Can, can you bring us up speed on the com community app catalog? Because that, that was sure. a big announcement uh, causing some buzz. Yeah, so it really is another thing that's direct response to what we've heard users say, which is, you know, we are doing things on top of OpenStack. You know, Heat is part, part of, a, you know, one of the OpenStack projects, but when you use it, you use these templates, you crew write them. So it's kind of that glue between the application developers, you know, and the infrastructure as a service. And so to be able to quickly spin up these environments is something, we, we've had this capability, there just hasn't been a place to share the recipes, if you will. And, you know, there's a central repository. And it, it made sense to us to kind of spearhead this at the foundation because you know when you think about this OpenStack powered planet, there's all these clouds you can plug into. You want to kind of have a, a neutral body, if you will, a community-led initiative where you can have kind of a single catalog. And there are always going to be other catalogs out there, but one that's that sort of you can take that and deploy it to your cloud of choice. So it kind of fits with our philosophy. 
Yeah, so Lauren, uh, there's so many things going on at this show. Uh, can, can you talk about a little bit of the balancing act between, you, you know, you've got you know, the sessions, the keynotes, the show floor, many events going on. Uh, give our audience kind of a flavor of some of the things going on. Sure, well, the OpenStack Summit started out a while back, I guess five years ago, it was just the design summit itself. So it was purely developer working sessions, planning out what the next release of the software is going to be. Um, and really that's evolved over time as we brought you know, more users into the fold and start building out kind of the conference side. Um, so this time we have the, the conference that's happening Monday through Thursday with a lot of the, the sessions. I think we have close to 500 sessions happening. Um, and then the design summit's happening Tuesday through Friday. And the difference this time from Paris is the design summit actually is incorporating the operators working sessions as well. So we're trying to, to bring the, the you know, contributing developers and the operators closer together, getting into the same sessions. Uh, we found before that there were a lot of the same topics that were happening in the operators track as there were happening in uh, some of the design summit tracks. So it really, and it, you know, they needed each other in the room each time. So it made sense to kind of bring these communities even closer together and, and work together, which is exciting. Wow. Yeah, and I think, you know, just to add to that, you know, another thing that is new this, this year is as we think about you know, integrating with all these other technologies is kind of welcoming those different communities in in a more formal way. We've always had people that work on related open source projects that are related some way to cloud or OpenStack you know, come to our summit and hallways and we've, we've, we've done some stuff in the past, but we really kind of put a bigger investment in this year. So yeah, you want to talk about the I'm collaboration? So, uh, <laughs> so we have um, o well, the OPNFV group. So uh, it's a group underneath the Linux Foundation, but they're basically doing like a midstream development for, or sorry, midstream uh, distribution for NFV. So they were here on Monday, we had Ansible here, CoreOS, we're doing a container day today. So just trying to show you know, what all is out there around the OpenStack ecosystem and bring them together. Yeah, uh, wow, I, yeah, yeah. I mean, just so, so much going on here. Um, let, let me ask, you know, how do you kind of measure success uh, for what, what's happening with the foundation and with the conference in general? I mean, one thing to say kind of more and more, um, you know, the maturity, you know, how, how do you guys look at that? Yeah. I would say that, you know, I'm, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but it always <laughs> comes back to users, yeah. right? So, of course, you know, are the users showing up and talking and are they participating, but ultimately are they happy? You know, we go to their sessions, or we meet, you know, meet in the hallways, anywhere you can, you can talk and get get their ear and say, you know, how's it going with OpenStack? You know, what version are you on? Which which projects are you evaluating or experimenting with? Are you familiar with, you know, these newer things like Magnum? You know, so, because you know, as a user, you're not necessarily going to be living and breathing the OpenStack, um, you know, day to day that w the rest of us are kind of, you know, doing. So, you know, just kind of reminding users of of new developments and getting their feedback. Do you think this is going the right direction? So if we, we see more users coming, participating, and we hear them say, hey, we're, we're happy with what's going on with OpenStack, we want to expand our footprint. So we're kind of thinking about success a little differently now, instead of just, okay, is this Fortune 500 company using it, but how big is it? Are they, they've been using it for two years, is it growing? You know, Comcast talked about how they, they grew their footprint 500% in the past year. So if you just look at it as logos on the slide, it's like well, we had Comcast two years ago, we have Comcast now, but what the impact the technology is making is far greater than it was you know, when they got started. So that becomes another way to kind of cut it. Yeah, and, and by the way, I, I think you guys have done a great job of, uh, you know, people always ask, well, the big companies are coming in. You know, HP puts a thousand people on it. Cisco's pushing hard. EMC, you know, huge booth this year. Didn't even have a booth last year. Um, how are the users still contributing? Um, so the question I want to ask is, when the kind of the big tent model, mm -hmm. um, I heard from some developers that said, you know, we want to work on, you know, the important stuff. And therefore, if it's not core, you know, maybe I don't want to be working on that. And could that stifle innovation? Yeah, I think that you know we see kind of the, the opposite um, is is that we're you know targeting with this model as as the development community kind of rolls it out, which is typically developers are wanting to come together with other domain experts to solve interesting problems. And in the past, they would do that in sort of an ancillary way that wasn't really officially recognized as an open sec project. So now those um, different problems that people are wanting to solve, they can do it across companies, they can do it in the summit and online with all of the different tools and processes we have, and they can do it in, you know, more of that can be under sort of the OpenStack umbrella. Even if it's nascent, it's experimental, you know, we no longer sort of say, well, you know, let's, let's wait to, to really help you. We want to provide resources at the design summit, rooms and sessions where people can meet. You know, that's what people are attracted to about OpenStack, is the community, the development model, 
the, the sense that there's a center of gravity, that if you want to do important stuff in cloud, you come here, you're in the hallways. I mean, these people look like they're having a good time. So, you know, it's a fun way to solve problems. It's not your uh, your typical boring, you know, cube job. No offense, not to the cube, but you know. <laughs> yeah, and I think exactly yeah. what you said. I mean, they, the Big Ten model is actually helping us recognize more projects, and so developers are getting to work on these official OpenStack projects, and they don't feel like they're just stuck in the StackForge repo or whatever else. Yeah, so. yeah Mark, I, I've never heard being on the cube to being <laughs> in a cubicle, so that, 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 that's a new one. All right, uh, the, the last big question I have is, you know, it, you know, making money off of open source stuff is really hard. Do, do you guys, uh, from the foundation standpoint, help companies kind of think through that, figure out their business models? I mean, companies like Red Hat, you know, do a good job with it, but it took them 15 years to get to a billion dollars. Sure. Uh, other companies, you know, I'll take Cisco as an example, is newer to working heavily in open source. Uh, we talked to Sam Ramji yesterday. I know that the Linux Foundation, their foundation, you all talk plenty. Mm -hmm. How do you help kind of the business community monetize this? Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously, the ecosystem being you know, successful is very important to us, and we think very important to the success of OpenStack. So I think just you know, helping them engage, I mean, the companies that are really engaging in the community the right way, and the technical community, and influencing the direction, and, and being good community members have also been the ones that we've seen that have been you know, very successful on the business side as well. So I think you know, from our side, really helping them get engaged in the right ways, getting them engaged in the right technical forums, and building credibility and just you know creating relationships with the users here is really important. And just to give a specific example, you know, one of the things we're doing the last few summits is we conduct upstream university training. And so a lot of newer companies getting involved in OpenStack will send their developers who maybe you know, aren't as familiar with OpenStack processes or maybe they're not even familiar with open source. And they have it's it's right before the summit, so I think the day or two before and it's just been growing, there's so much demand because people want to understand, you know, how do I be successful in the community and so we're, we're providing that directly as, yeah. you know, as an organized effort to try to help people uh, be productive when they engage in the community. Yeah, and other than that, we're always just trying to help kind of lower the barrier to entry for startups and helping make sure that we have a really active community there. So, you know, whether it's really simple things like making sponsorship prices really affordable for startups or helping, you know, put a spotlight on them is, is something we really focus on too. All right, so you know we're almost at the midway point, uh, you know, getting close to, to that. Uh, you know, talking to the users, talking to the people at the show. Uh, any any takeaways you want to share so far, or that you know, when when people leave Vancouver, you know, what what do you want them saying about uh, the the show and about OpenStack? Yeah, well, uh, I mean, I I hope that they really take away the culture of the OpenStack community, and I think that people people feel it here. I mean, whether it's just like you know, the feel of the show floor or the design, it's not just another industry conference, but the big things that we're focusing on this week is, you know, interoperability, those core services coming together, and then how you innovate on top of that. And, you know, that's why we divided the keynotes the way that we did, that's how we structured a lot of the content this week. So, I hope that's the, the big takeaway for people. Yeah, I mean, she said it all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so uh, you know, so far, look, I, I give you guys high grades. I, I love the community here. I had a great time in Atlanta. Um, it was, you know, when I'm choosing with my wife, you know, where she'd come <laughs> travel with, uh, it's Vancouver and it's OpenStack. It's fun people to hang out with. I, I think you've done a great job. Uh, Thank you. Uh, you know, highlighting some of the pieces here. So, uh, we love hanging out at this awesome. place. Yeah, so. this is great. Uh, thanks, and uh, you know, we we've sometimes we put a co kind of corporate backdrop behind. We got the people here, <laughs> kind of feel it there, see the ships coming in and out. I love um, it. 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 It's gorgeous here. I heard Denver. a lot a lot of laughter from random people going by, so that's <laughs> just a good sign to me. That's uh -huh. the real success metric. How much laughter do you get during the week? So. Absolutely, so so much time we talk about the product and, and highlighting the people is you know, a huge part, part of the community here. Definitely. All right, so uh, you know, I, th I think we'll, we'll, we'll leave it there. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. Thank uh, you. you know, Lauren and Mark, uh, th you know, thank you for, for all you've done for the community and uh, you know, for helping support theCUBE uh, here at the program. I'm Stu Miniman with Wikibon.com. Uh, we've got lots more coverage here uh, from the show over the next day and a half. So uh, stay tuned and uh, you watch all the video.